come alive in the name of Jesus. And I'm about, of course, I'm, I'm about to cry right now, but in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, you are sovereign, Lord. Holy moly. We have the privilege of sitting down with Brandon Lake, a preacher's kid from South Carolina. That's right, PK. Where my PK is at? That's What's right. up? We're the best. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, slightly tired because it's day three of the Miracle Nights tour. Yeah. And um, these nights we we give it all. As a preacher's kid, how quickly were you on stage at church singing worship songs? Um, yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm sure I made an appearance a few times as a, as a young, like actual kiddo. Um, my dad used me um, for different uh, pl- you remember skits like when churches oh, yeah. had skits? Yeah, so definitely sure. you played in, a few roles. Were you in Salty the Singing Songbook ever? No, what is that? <laughs> uh, that's stuff I was Salty. In. Salty? Yes. I thought everybody did that. Yeah. Maybe no. it was my church. <laughs> I was never salty. No, I was only ever sweet. P S A L T Y, like okay. from the Psalms. Yes. Got it. Uh-huh. Sorry. Cool. Awesome. Not, <laughs> no, but not every preacher's kid gets to be salty. <laughs> there was this. There was this kid named Will who played guitar at what we call on the praise team. Oh yeah, yes. yes. yep. praise team. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's probably a Southern Baptist term, the praise <laughs> team. And uh, I thought he was really cool. My dad had a guitar at home, so um, he taught me G, C, D, and E minor, and I kind of took it from there. And I was about twelve, so I started playing guitar. Oh, incredible. And uh, the youth group, or you know. Um, 12, 13, started singing around 15, and wow. yeah, been doing it about every Sunday since. Yeah, that's incredible. What did that feel like? The first time you're leading worship at church, Yeah, what, what did the, it feel like? The first time I ever sang, because my story came about, like me singing, it was like, I actually didn't want to, um, and all my friends just kept um, haggling me, and, and they're like, dude, we need someone to sing at youth group. <laughs> like, please, like, we've heard you sing, and you sound decent. It's like, fine. just do it. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fine. So I, I finally do it. Absolutely hated it. Wow, I was like, I'll really? never do this again. Yeah, oh I was like, gosh. I'll never do this again. I felt so naked on stage. I was like, this is so humiliating, mm. and just that pressure. And I've, and it's funny that I'm doing this as a as a calling in front of thousands of people. Um, which it actually might be more terrifying leading worship for like four or five right. people than I four thousand. Yeah, but just I still to this day I shake in my boots going out there on that stage. But back then, um. Yeah, it was so terrifying. So I wouldn't do it again. My friends kept annoying me. And then I was like, all right, I'll do it again. I did it. And then it was shortly after that that it wasn't really until I saw people actually connect to the Lord and mm-hmm. connect with the Lord that I was like, okay, there's something really special here. Mm-hmm. And I think um, a lot of times we look for a sign from God in the sky, you know, mm-hmm. or to smack us right in the face. But it's often through his people that he affirms the gift on your life. Yeah. And that's how it came about for me. It was listening to my friends and my mentors and they're like, Hey, I think you really need to step into this. I think mm. God's given you a voice for that, for a reason. So. Wow. That's incredible. Musically yeah. speaking, I heard you say once that you attempted to just imitate Phil Wickham when yeah. you got on stage. Yeah. That's how I started writing songs. I uh, absolutely adore Phil. And now he's like one of my best buds. Now and, you're wor- the worship nights. And now we're yeah. going out on the summer worship nights uh-huh. tour <laughs> and um, nights with a K because yes. we're the nights of worship. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, really excited. He's been, he's been my longest kind of per, like person I've looked up to and modeled and, and imitated mm-hmm. my life after. And, you know, I've heard it said that you've got to imitate before you innovate. Mm-hmm. And so he is the person I probably imitated more than anyone. And so when I got a hold of his record around the time, like cannons came out, yeah. I was like, man, I, I want to try to write songs like that. And so I, I'd, I'd write down my own words and what I wanted to say to the Lord, but try to make them sound like Phil. You know, oh and gosh. model out his That's songs incredible. and, and, um, yeah, divine romance was even in my wedding mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, so he's, he's been a huge, huge example and mentor to me over the years. Wow. We just wanted to kind of run through, um, the songs that are currently in the top 100 of the oh, CCLI sick. chart. Okay. Okay. So we've got Graves in the Gardens, We Praise You, Gratitude, Same God, which we did this morning at church, Rest on Us, My Testimony. There's nothing that our God can't do, rattle and champion. I think wow. that's, nine that's nine Brandon Lake songs on the current <laughs> CCLI chart. Well, How does that make you feel to hear that, man? <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's it amazing. is amazing. Um, I mean, that's been my dream. Um, I never thought I'd be here, but um, I had prophetic word after prophetic word spoken over me that um, 
at a young age that I would write songs that would travel across wow. the nations. And um, of course, that's amazing to hear that. But when it's years and years and years ago, and I'm just trying to write a song mm-hmm. for my local church, and I'm like, then we're putting this music out and 100 people listen to it. You're yeah. like, oh, cool. We have 112 streams, you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, it can feel a little, de- you know, um, defeating. And, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's, um, I want to say that's amazing. And, and that's such a, a testament to, to God and allowing me, the only way that happens mm-hmm. is by getting around people outside, outside your, your small circle, like getting outside. Um, I think exposure to other, um, expressions mm-hmm. of worship. And, um, it's like when you get people in the room who don't sound like you mm-hmm. think like you, um, lead like you, something beautiful happens. You create something you couldn't have created on your own yeah. and I think the only way I've gotten to nine on CCLI is that I've I've just been really really hungry to grow and and so I've spent time with, with Brooke and I've spent time oh, with yeah. Elevation I've spent time with Mav and um so it's been really cool to be a part of all of those things and I think what God does when in that spirit of collaboration you know I think he blesses it because it looks like the kingdom mm-hmm. you know so I'm ecstatic about yeah, it awesome. I mean it's mm-hmm. been my dream to have to have people sing these songs, you know. For, for those who don't know, like the CCLI chart is how churches keep track of the songs that are being sung in church. So that's, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, you, you may not even realize it, but you're singing a lot of Brandon Lake tunes in church. Every Sunday. So, yeah. Somebody came to the show, um, I think last night, and um, and came up to one of our, a friend of one of our band, my band members, and and was like, um, yeah, so I've never heard of this Brandon Lake guy. He he invited her, and she's a worship leader, and uh, she's like, so like did he write these songs and he's like yeah 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 okay like we've been leading these songs i had no idea who this guy is you know and that's what's cool about my set on tour um these miracle nights is um i'm singing some songs that Mm -hmm. actually there's not a recording of me singing that song out there yeah and yet um it's so cool like even same god i don't have a version of that out with me singing it and Mm -hmm. yet it's a highlight every single night people just like love that song and so I think it's really cool. It's like, it's not about me. It's mm-hmm. about it's about these songs and connecting with the Lord. I love that. So we did a poll with worship leaders and we asked them, what is your favorite Brandon Lake song to play in church? Wow. Um, it's all over the board, it truthfully. Yeah. Uh, really? Neil said gratitude. He said, I, I sing and play that every night as my daughter and, uh, and I worship together. Wow. So he sings it with his kids. She's four. Yeah. yeah. Um, Josh says gratitude and graves into gardens. Yeah. Amazing. Joel, uh, Rest on Us or Honey in the Rock was, was awesome. I love Honey in the Rock. Yes. Jeff says Graves into Gardens. Luke, who is my worship leader, who I get to nice. just, um, serve with, Same God, which we did this morning, That's which is pretty awesome. fun. Gabriel said Son of Heaven. Oh, wow. So mm-hmm. yeah. what's your favorite Brandon Lake song Man, to uh, sing? I church? have to say Gratitude. Yeah. yeah. It's everything I want to say to the Lord, and I love that. For me, it um, even just sonically, musically, it kind of is a picture of um, – uh, it, it kind of hits both into the spectrum of mm-hmm. like really pretty, but then it has a roar at the yes. end and it gets aggressive yeah. and yes. rowdy. And so yes. I like to say that um, I, I like showing both ends of the spectrum of reflective and rowdy. Mm-hmm. And so that song kind of goes from this reflective and just thankful and pretty angelic kind of feel to like rowdy and you got the lion in your lungs yeah. type thing. And yes. then it, it's like so vertical. It's like, you know, it's just to the Lord within that bridge, it takes a moment to be like, hold on, let me, let me mm-hmm. command my soul to like, wake up. Like I've got more to offer God than mm-hmm. I think I do. Let me let that lion out, you know, and mm-hmm. that lion size praise. And so, yeah, that one's been the, the most fun. And obviously God's been using it in a crazy way. The craziest thing about that song is it was, it almost didn't make my record. What? Really? Yeah. It was a deep <laughs> track and didn't even make it a single. I had no clue how special it was. Wow. And we re-recorded it probably four or five times. And because I, I got it back and I was like, and um, my producer is amazing, but he actually did what I asked. I was like, I want this to sound like just a, a church song. Mm-hmm. And he made it sound like a church song. When I got it back, I was like, this isn't inspiring at mm. all. Like this sounds like every other worship song out there. And I'm just not like, I'm okay with that for some songs, but like this song is just way too special for, for me to get the recording back and go, Eh, mm. I don't like. I believe the words, but yeah. I don't believe it. I don't like. Yeah. I, it's not con- yes. convincing to me. And so I'm like, dude. After a few attempts, I was like, let's strip everything away. Put me in front of a microphone like mm-hmm. this with an acoustic, and I'm mm-hmm. going to do the whole song and as organically and passionately as I can. 
And that's basically what you hear. And then he kind of built the music around how that organically built. And, um, and, and it's crazy that, um, after three or so years, mm -hmm. now it's surfacing and God's breathing on it. And number one radio song, by yeah. the way. We were talking yeah. about CCLI, yeah. but number one on radio. My best friend and I were talking about this song. And, you know, she was just saying, you're talking about the pretty and the rowdy. Yeah. And how, like, that so aligns with scripture, too, because she she yeah. was like, I was reminded of the song as I was reading about when um, the Lord says, even if you don't worship, the rocks will cry out. Yeah, exactly. And the rocks are the rowdy, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And, like, we're, we could be probably a little more rowdy in our worship. But like right. God was saying, even if you don't do it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. My creation still will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, you know, God's in the whisper. He's also in the shout. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's, there's so many different forms of praise and worship. And I think, um, that's why I like songs that, that, that do both, or maybe not even just in one song, but in your worship set, I think it's important to have aspects of praise and worship that, that kind of hit the spectrum. Um, you know, there's a word for, for praise that is, is, is a shout and there's mm -hmm. a word that's more reflective and, um, and honoring and, 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 um, quiet and still. And so I think that as worship leaders it's important for us to educate the congregation and lead them to a place of, of yeah. understanding how to express and respond to the Lord in all those ways, mm -hmm. you know? So as you, as a worship leader, is it refreshing for you to ever be in the congregation and be 100%. filled up or is it like you come alive on stage or how does that? Yeah, no, both. Um, but when you're leading, you're, you're, you're not leading for yourself. Mm -hmm. Luckily, God's so good that you get filled up. Yes. Yeah. But like my responsibility, a worship leader's responsibility is to minister to the Lord. But then secondly, it's like your responsibility isn't for you to get yours. Mm. It's for you to lead people to the throne room, for you to take the hand of God and the, and the hand of the congregation. And somehow in that atmosphere, mm. as best as you can connect. help that to connect. And, yeah. and so you know, some worship leaders get a little too lost up there. And it's like, hey, no, like, don't leave them, lead them. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and so that, but because of that, I think it's super important to have your own time of worship. And so I'm still on staff at my church. Um, they let me travel the country and, and nice. be wild and stuff, but they have been so gracious to keep me on. And when I come home, they're not super demanding of me of like, mm -hmm. hey, we need you to lead every weekend you're home. They recognize that I need rest and to be revived. And so- mm -hmm. Um, a lot of Sundays, I just go with my family, Love worship that. with my family, and it is uh, life-saving for me, especially yeah. being out on the road. People think that this is a, a sexy lifestyle. It is not. It is <laughs> very it's difficult. Hard. It's hard on your body, on yeah. your, and especially on your mind, mm. and touring isn't reality, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's very important to get home quickly. It's the reason why I tour Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I go home yeah. Yeah. and only do that two weekends a month. And then I have a few weeks off, so I'm in church, mm -hmm. getting fed, filled up, a tree planted by a stream of water. Yes. And then that way I have something to give when I go back out. I love that. We also ask worship leaders, what is the most challenging Brandon Lake song to sing in church? Oh, my gosh. And every single one of them said gratitude. Including because me. Of the vocal, what? Because it takes of the us like range. three people to get the melody covered <laughs> because your that range is so, is so funny. incredible. I would have not, I never would have guessed so that. So incredible yeah. that like, okay, you do the bridge, I'll do the melody, yeah, I'll yeah, do yeah, the yeah, chorus. Yeah. 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 Well, I will say I sing it's, for- that's what's It's incredible. Yeah. I sing for about two hours on these nights mm -hmm. and my voice is toast by the end of it because <laughs> I keep telling like Pastor Steve and I'm like, yo, can we please write songs in lower keys? Yeah. Like, but it just sounds better high and yeah. you just need to scream and write. But that's funny because gratitude for me is a little bit easier. Um, I, there's a reason why I don't do a few songs on tour because I would be toast. Yeah. Um, I lion is mm -hmm. almost impossible to sing. Uh, I am done after that yeah. song. One time singing lion Forget and I'm it. done. Uh, might get loud. Uh -huh. is insanely difficult because it's a high A for mm -hmm. a male that's pretty high. And I'm actually a baritone. Uh, people think oh, that I'm a tenor. I would never I'm have thought really that. I'm really not. I just, wow. I push myself to get there. And uh, it's not as natural for me. Like Benjamin William Hastings, mm -hmm. who's out here, he is a true tenor. Yes. Like he has a crazy range. He can hit high, high notes with like zero effort. For me, I have to really work for it. But um, yeah, Mike Get Loud, uh, Lion, and... Um, rattle is pretty oh. high and you have to do it with some grit. Yeah, yeah so, you do. Yeah. I do rattle on tour, but I do it in the acoustic set nice. like four whole steps down. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is encouraging to worship leaders it, right it now. It really I'm like, is. I'm just, I'm, I put is, it down here for everybody is, else to be able to sing. so validating yeah. right now. <laughs> oh, and 
<laughs> I have never led Graves into Gardens in the key we recorded it in really? since the recording. Really? Yeah, so it's in B. Um, when I'm at elevation or on an elevation uh, night, I lead it in B flat. So I drop it half a step on my tour because it's the very last song mm -hmm. and I'm toast by then. Yeah. I sing it in A. So worship Come leaders, on. do you hear that? It is okay yes. to change the drop the key for key. your yeah. vocalist. It, it, it's not worth ruining your voice. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's well, while amazing. we're on the subject of gratitude, we have a segment on our show. It's called Thank You. And we use this moment to thank people in our life or in our community who 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 are doing great work. Yeah. So he's like, mm -hmm. we can't have Brandon Lake on the show with his number yeah. one song being Gratitude and not make you a part of this segment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is there anyone that comes to mind right now that you just feel like needs a little extra mm. love, thank you, gratitude? They don't get told we appreciate you enough. Oh, man. Anybody that comes organization to mind. you work you know with what? or just people? I want to shout out teachers. Right. I don't there know why that came to mind, but I, I actually have been thinking about that lately. Like, what teachers do is so incredibly important mm -hmm. and and crucial to our children's growth and and the, let's be honest their salaries are absolute trash yes. and they are um doing work that is like incredibly important it is um like I, now that i have kids i really understand that mm -hmm. and it, it's been teachers and so i'll say teachers i really mean in school but also teachers outside like biblical teachers mm -hmm. and like i'll also um bring youth leaders into that yeah i think youth leaders are in this season might be more important than a senior pastor mm. i maybe that's not exactly accurate or there's a better way of putting that <laughs> but i think that if yeah. if we're going to see our nation change and come back to jesus mm -hmm. in a huge way um and and these next generations coming up i think that we have got to figure out a way to to have healthy 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 um passionate um uh, uh youth youth pastors mm -hmm. that are very intentional in being in these students lives mm -hmm. the reason i'm here today is because teachers and mentors of mine at that age kept me from veering off left and right yeah. and the only way that they could do that is they got into my mess they got into my life they spent time with me they showed up at school mm -hmm. at a school lunch and they spent time with me there was real credibility there I went to my youth leaders about things I didn't feel like I could tell my dad, yeah. you know? And, um, and I've seen where that has saved me and I've seen where some other people in my life, they didn't have that. And I think that's why they mm -hmm. ventured off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, man, I'm just so grateful for any form of, of a teacher. Um, somebody that is looking at a, a, um, a young adult and saying, Hey, this is the gold. I see the gold inside of you and I'm calling it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, Love that. Yeah, I think um, if I can encourage you to do anything, it would be see it, say it. If you see something in in a, a young adult, like mm -hmm. say it, remind them like the the God thing that's on their life. That's the reason why I'm here today is because people were faithful to do that mm -hmm. and and also walk with me through my mess and um, help me on my journey. And so thank I'm thankful for every teacher, the hours and upon hours that you sacrifice, that you spend loving on on kids that are absolutely cray cray and drive you insane yeah. um i work with student ministry yeah so I, yes I'm, they're amazing I'm, though. I'm from a family of school teachers so we know. yeah so they're yeah. the superheroes you know mm -hmm. and just want to thank moms moms are now. amazing mm -hmm. um my wife is my hero and um just everything that she does to to keep our family together love our kids and um and make them make sure they know that they are loved and valued and seen and heard and mm -hmm. and uh yeah mamas are amazing awesome. so we're talking about gratitude and obviously the success that it's had on christian radio we've already talked about the nine songs you have on ccli <laughs> right now the, the the church chart um do you ever feel like this pressure to write the next great yep. worship song um yeah or or those just moments with god um absolutely feel the pressure yeah mm -hmm. and it's something that i try to crucify every day um because you don't write the next gratitude by trying to write the next gratitude you don't write the next what a beautiful name by trying to write the next what a beautiful name it's probably one of the biggest turnoffs when i write into a when i when i walk into a, a song write with someone else and and they're like, man, let's try to write a song like this. Mm. And I, I understand that. I've said it before. I'm guilty of it. But the truth is, like, that's not how you get there. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's going to be a counterfeit version of that yeah. of yeah. that song. You know, I think the best way I have found to get to a song that's going to and not get number one I could care less about being number one on a chart I'm grateful I think that's super awesome because it's an affirmation it's a it it shows how many people are listening and connecting to that song but like hitting number one on a radio chart didn't change my life you know it's like but it showed me that maybe that song is changing other people's lives yes and I think the best way to get to that next song is just staying in that place of God. What are you saying to me? Mm-hmm. What do your people need to hear? I heard Bill Johnson say one time, um, where do you see the church 10 years from now? And as a songwriter, write the songs that lead them there. Mm. And so right now, like, you know, one thing that we're going after on these nights is deliverance. Like mm. people are so filled with shame and mm. fear, especially what we've gone through as a nation yes. and, and as a, you know, a world the, the past few years. And so I'm writing songs that are like, man, I renounce fear. I renounce the lie that I'm not enough. I renounce shame. I renounce this. And, you know, I'm, I'm putting on this. I'm put, I'm adopted. Mm-hmm. I'm beloved. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. And, you know, it's things like that. And I think when it's honest, and when you hear from the Lord, like he takes mm-hmm. care of the rest. So, yeah. but man, I feel that pressure every single day, <laughs> sure. especially when something's successful. That's like my, the temptation every single day is like, yeah. right. how do I write that next song? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just have to surrender daily and go, God, I'm going to trust you, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, I think the key to is you got to write songs for your church, mm-hmm. not the church. Yeah. Like, right. Just write songs for your church. Mm-hmm. And if it connects at your church, good chances are it's going to connect everywhere. Hearing that, I, I think people are connecting. Um, yeah. I want to share a story with you. And while it's my story, I feel like a lot of people will relate to mm. it. Uh, we just had our daughter, Banks. She's about to be three months old. Banks? Yes. So oh, precious. I love that name. That's our dog's name. Oh. oh. We were just... <laughs> and that, no, no, no. No, so like, this is hilarious. Um, uh, so we named our son Banner. Uh-huh. That's Benjamin William Hastings. That's his dog's name. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and so our dog's Banks, uh-huh. your, That's your funny. child's yeah. Banks. Was it after the Need to Breathe We song? just need more uh, B names. <laughs> yes. I actually wanted to name, so I have a bow. Yeah. Oh, and, okay. and I was like, babe, I want to name another kid Bear, but that was like, it's too much. <laughs> yeah. Bear and Bo, Need to Breathe. It was after the song. And they're know, friends of mine, so I was like, we can't was. do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so she, we went into the birthing process thinking we were going to have this natural birth. Right. And this idea of, oh, it's going to be peaceful. It's gonna yeah, right. Be, easy we've got we've done all the the, the road work you to got get your playlist here. ready our yeah. birth plan the whole thing and uh baby banks was breached pretty much the whole time so wow. we uh my wife's water breaks breaks we go to the hospital and she's still bre- breached even though we've been praying and believing that she's gonna flip around she's yeah, gonna flip right. around this plan is it's gonna happen um and so when we get to the hospital and the final ultrasound we realize she's not so we're, we're prepping for a c-section which we kind of knew was going to be a thing but the C-section room is very different than the I would imagine. regular birthing room. And so I wasn't prepared for that. So we walk into what felt like a stage, yeah. you know, with this light and your bed is at center stage and there's half a dozen, dozen people there. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. what is happening? Yeah. Um, and even though I know C-sections are pretty common and doctors have a lot of experience in it, the only thing that's playing through my head is, yeah, but something always, there's something could always go yeah, wrong. Yeah, of course. And um, I just remember uh, as I'm watching the, the monitor and trying to memorize all the numbers because I want to be the first to know if something's wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember the nurse saying, you know, you can play some music if you'd like. Wow. And I thought, that's right. We need, we need some music. We need some worship music. So you were the first name that popped in my head. Wow. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Brandon Lake's House, House of Miracles record. Dang. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, I skipped song number one because it's a little too rocking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that just make things more chaotic. Yeah. 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 So I went song number two, too rowdy. and the peace that I felt in that moment, mm. I can't describe to you. Wow. And I don't know if you know this, but C-sections are pretty fast. Wow. And so our daughter Banks was born as House of Miracles is playing. No way. And literally the moment that she is coming out of the womb, I'm hearing come alive <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> she. And of about course, I'm, try- I'm about to cry right now. But yeah. in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, you are sovereign Lord. Thank you for reminding me through your music that you can bring peace in the midst of all of it. Mm. So I know that. Holy moly. You wow. write songs for people to hear. And whether it's a church service. Dang. 
or their car or an operating room. They matter, my friend. Dude, thank you. Um, this might blow your mind. When I wrote House of Miracles, I knew I had to be the word house. But when I wrote that song, and I'm not making this up, as I'm writing that song, the first place that I knew I was writing this song for was for hospitals. Wow. That is crazy. I was like, this song will be played in hospitals mm. all over the country, and that's why this song exists. Mm. I know it'll be played in homes, and I think that's amazing because that's mm -hmm. obviously a very house of miracles. It's like, yeah. It makes sense. But I was like, I think this song exists because people are going to need it yes. in the hospital, in the emergency room, in situations like that. And we're going to declare that this hospital is a house of miracles. You turn that operating room into I a house it. of miracles. Holy moly. God did, but use wow. your voice to do it. Yeah. Wow. I have one other really cool story, um, and it's, it's similar. Um, this guy, uh, a tattoo artist, um, Austin brought him out to Dallas and he did some tour tats for our, mm -hmm. our, our crew. And sorry for those of you who are super against that. Um, <laughs> my body is a temple. I just have stained glass windows. Yeah. Um, and so he, uh, right. he shares this testament. So he, he tattoos miracle boys, you know, me and my band, oh, yeah. he tattoos miracle boys on, on my arm. And he's like, Hey, before you leave, um, I need you to tattoo something on me. I was like, dude, I don't know. Dude, what? And he's like, yeah, I need you to tattoo gratitude on my mm -hmm. wrist. I was like, no way. No, he's like, no, I, like you have to. I was like, are you sure? He's like, let me tell you the story. He's like, when our son was born, he came out and he wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, as a father, and I just started freaking out. And I just I just started like, like panicking. And it was like a, it was like a mm -hmm. decent little while he wasn't breathing. The doctors are starting to freak, you know, they're doing the thing without saying, you know, just doing their thing. And he's like, okay, like, frozen like doesn't know what to do and he said all of a sudden gratitude started playing and there's that line you've got a lion inside of your lungs and as that was playing he goes all of a sudden I heard my son start to cry no. and breathe and so he just began to weep and he's like as that song as that was prophesied that you've got a lion inside of your lungs my son like came alive and and, and began to cry and breathe and so I tattooed gratitude on his wrist. I, like, I have to That's now. Incredible. Yeah, doesn't look too great, but man, thank you for sharing that story. That's absolutely, absolutely incredible. And God is using you, my friend. No, oh, man, I'm so honored. Very humbled. Uh, when I first heard you live was with Mavis City this yeah. last tour, and um, I never heard "Fear Is Not My Future" before. And three years ago, I went through cancer, and I had a super rare cancer in my foot. Whoa. It was very wild Whoa. and um unexpected and i i have so much fear mm. even though i i say i'm healed i'm healed like i know i'm yeah. I, he has healed me i yeah. know that to be true yeah and if not he's still good i yeah. i hang on to that and i i but i struggle with fear yeah. and when um you got to the sickness is not my yeah my story, story and i was you are and i I didn't know I could come undone like that. Wow. I didn't know that wow. I, my heart needed to hear that so badly because mm. fear, the enemy has a way of taking fear and just permeating your life. 100%. Yeah. And, and no amount of like self um, talk can yeah. calm that. Only the Lord can calm that. Yeah. And so um, I don't know. I just I just yeah. wanted to say thank you for that. Oh that gosh. just to remind me, I'm I have my next set of scans coming up next uh, next spell. month, and I have going. Fear is not my future. Sickness yeah. is not my story. Yes. And and we agree. And he is. Yeah. And uh, I just thank you. Of course. Thank you for that. That's the next so song, by the way. That people are hearing on yeah FM. yeah you really yeah, yeah we're Maverick playing City that. We're playing yeah. Oh, amazing! It's incredible! Wow! Why do you love that song? Um, I think exactly why you said that. Mm. I think, uh, or what you said, uh, people are riddled with fear, mm -hmm. especially these past few years. Yeah. It's what's, it's what, it's crazy that we write songs having no idea what's just ahead. It's yeah. like, how do you not believe in God? If you're like, if I look at my own life, writing graves in the gardens, like right before COVID, mm -hmm. we're going into that season where so many people would need to cling to that mm. promise and that hope. And, 
Um, and fear is not my future is the same, yeah. you know, and, um, I never, ever thought people would connect to that song like the way they have. We've been doing it on these nights in the acoustic set and it's just been beautiful to see people it with so much faith cling to that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you can see how, how desperately they need that. And Josh as he's been praying on these nights. He's been saying something like, this is why it's so important that we, that we receive daily the mind of Christ mm -hmm. because in the mind of Christ. Do you think worry can exist in the mind of Christ? Mm -hmm. Do you think fear can exist in the, in the mind of Christ? It can't. And so like mm -hmm. every day, I think that should be a prayer yeah. um, and not just a prayer, but also I think it's important what we declare. Declarations make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it shifts our perspective. And so saying that fear is not my future and, and saying sickness is not my story. It's mm -hmm. like putting on the mind of Christ and saying, yeah. uh, -uh, uh, uh, you don't live here. This is Christ's mind. Yeah. Like this isn't, this isn't a place for fear, worry, doubt, shame, guilt, any mm -hmm. of it. So with Easter approaching and a lot of worship leaders getting ready to lead their congregation, their people, or even new people yeah. that are coming to church for the first time, what would you say to them, to that, that, that worship leader right now who is like mulling over the songs, trying to figure out mm -hmm. what to do on this, on this big day? I mean, this, you know, one of the biggest days for the church, the biggest day, I guess, for the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to worship leaders. Yeah. Um, man, you can have all the right songs. Um, and it still feel like karaoke. Mm. Um, I would say, um, lead with the authority that you've been given from Christ. If you were put on that platform to lead, like, I don't, I just don't like he's placed you there for a reason. And it's not to just sing a song. Mm -hmm. It's to release God's power, his authority, his truth, his gospel. And uh, you can hear a song with great truth and it'll do work because his word doesn't return void. Yeah. But there's, some, there's a difference when someone leads it with authority. And um, well, part of, you know, one of my goals is to raise up other Brandons. And I would say if there's any, if there's anything I, I quickly want to try to get them is to start leading with whoever those Brandons are, which I have a few in my, in my life, but I try to encourage them to lead with authority, with mm -hmm. passion, with conviction. Don't just sing it to me, like convince me, yeah. convince me that this is what you're, you've, you've bet your life on. Convince mm -hmm. me, um, that you, 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 yeah, that you absolutely know that this is truth. And there's going to be a lot of people walking through your doors that are like, I'm going to give God a one more shot. Yeah. And I think if we just put on a, a karaoke service or a, hey, here's some nice songs, um, a TED talk with a few mm -hmm. points and another song, and then we walk out the door. I just don't, I just don't know that we're leading people the best way, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so I'll just say, lead with that authority that God's already given you. You just have to step into it. That's like right. I shake in my boots every single night when I go out to lead. I'm, I'm not kidding you, but there's a moment that when you give your, your nerves and your weakness and your insecurity over to God, it turns mm -hmm. into God confidence. One of my favorite scriptures, it says, um, forget about self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You'll fall flat on your face. Message version. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> said instead, cultivate God confidence. How do you wow. cultivate God confidence? I think it looks like dependency. You do it afraid. Mm -hmm. You just do it afraid. Oh you step out there, you give God your yes, and then when you feel that, that burning, that, that, that sense of, I was made to do this, step into it mm -hmm. and lead, like command the congregation, lead with the authority that he's given you. You're not overstepping your bounds. He's like, mm -hmm. actually, yes, this is what I've invited you into. Like teach my people, lead my people, yeah. wake them up. Like it drives me insane in that when I'm leading and I see bodies, but I don't see signs of life. Mm -hmm. I want people to be fully alive. He yes. said, he came that we may have life and life more abundantly, fully alive. Mm -hmm. And I want to see worship leaders um, wake the church up and go, hey, there's more to this. That. There's more to life. Like we can step into the joy, step into the confidence that God has, has, has given us. So Something really cool about what you just said is I do like a word of the year. I mm. have been for the past several years. Last year, my word was cultivate. Wow. And then this year, my word is confidence. Come on. And so I just like, I thank wow. you for that. Yeah, of course. That's, of course. That was beautiful. That's been a word you for didn't me. Even know. I've needed it. I need it nightly. My, and then I'll say this too. Every time I go to lead worship, I pray one prayer every night. Mm. Help. Mm. Help. 
I can't do this on my own. Mm-hmm. So Holy Spirit, help. 